video, we're going to talk about the basics of decimals and how they relate to fractions. So what we have here is a place value chart. Now you've probably seen these before, except this is the part that you would see. All of these would be whole numbers, and you may have even seen it with numbers larger than thousands. So here on this chart, you'll notice there's a decimal, and then we have a couple of numbers behind the decimal. Now, when we're talking about decimal places, they have names just like the other places in digits that we would read have. And they're actually pretty similar. You'll notice that the first digit behind the decimal is called tenths. Just like the second digit in front or the second digit in a number would be tens, these are tenths. The second digit behind the decimal would be hundredths, just like this third digit over here would be hundreds. So you'll notice that the difference in these two columns is that we've added in TH on the end. Now, if I were to read the number that we have here, we have 1,234 and 56 hundredths. So notice where the decimal is, we use the word and in its place. And then just like we read regular numbers that are whole numbers, we read what's behind the decimal together. So we have 56, and then whatever the place is, that's where we add it. Since there are two digits, we'd say that it's in the hundredths place. Now, you'll notice those tenths and hundredths, they might sound a little like fractions. And that's because fractions and decimals are actually related to each other. So let's see how fractions and decimals are related. Here we're going to look at how fractions and decimals are related. Now you'll notice here up at the top, we have some grids. And in this case, these are two grids that look very much like shaded fractions that you should already be familiar with. In this particular case, we have this box or square that's split into 10 pieces. And three of those 10 pieces are shaded. So from what you already know in fractions, you would know that this fraction would be 3 over 10, or 3 tenths. Now, in word form, you know that you would see it this way. And there's that THS, or TH, added to the word there to show that it's less than 1. Now the question is, is how do I write that as a decimal? Well, if you remember from our place value chart, tenths was one place behind the decimal. Now, tenths here matches those tenths. So all I have to do is take this top number and put it behind the decimal. Now, we're gonna put a zero in the front of the decimal to show that we have no whole numbers here. There are no full blocks shaded in. So this decimal would be read the same way as the fraction that it matches, three tenths. In this particular picture, we still have this picture split into 10 pieces, but now nine of the 10 are shaded in. So in the fraction form, we would have nine over 10 or nine tenths. Now, to put that as a decimal, remember that we're only going to have one point behind the decimal because these are in tenths, and that point behind would be the nine. We'll put the zero in the front to show that we have no whole numbers, so it's just nine tenths. The entire amount is less than one. Now, of course, we've seen decimals where they have more than one digit behind the decimal point. And we actually talked about them a little bit using that place value chart. So here I have two squares that are split into hundreds. So let's say that I shade in some of the blocks. Let's say that I shade in three of those rows. Now we know that each one of these rows has 10 in it. 
So that would be 10, 20, 30 of the 100 squares. So as a fraction, that would be 30 out of 100 or 30 hundredths. And notice the TH on the end. Now to write this as a decimal, if you remember in our place value chart, hundredths had two places behind the decimal. The two places would be the 30 that I have here. And then I put my zero in the front because in this case I have no whole numbers. Now you do have to be careful. You'll notice in this case I have two numbers behind the decimal. I can only have two numbers, but it be just a single digit in the hundredths. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, let me show you on this hundredths chart. Let's say that all that I have shaded in out of the 100 squares in this chart are nine of them. So this would be nine out of 100 or nine hundredths. Now, we've already said that when we're dealing with hundredths, there are two places behind the decimal. But how am I going to do that if there's only one number, a single digit number, that I have at the top of the fraction? Well, what we do is we put a zero in front of the number. It's much like dealing with money. If I only have five cents, I'm not going to write a decimal and then a five. I'm going to write a decimal, a zero, and a five. So the same would hold here. Then I'm going to put that zero in the front to show that I don't have any whole numbers. So I have nine hundredths. Now, the way I like to kind of remember if I need one or two places behind the decimal is if I see it in the fraction form, it's actually going to match the number of zeros. So notice I have two zeros in 100. I have two zeros behind the decimal. I have one zero in 10, so I have only one number behind the decimal. Now, in some cases, we'll have to do it without a picture. So we're going to take a look at some of those. We're going to take some fractions and turn them into decimals, but we're also going to take some decimals and turn them into the fraction form. So in this case right here, I have one tenth. Tenth. I should know tenth means one place behind the decimal, and I have one zero there as a reminder. Now, what number is going to go behind the decimal? I'm going to use the numerator of my fraction. I only have one of the pieces, and then I'll put my zero in the front. So this would be one tenth. In this case, I have hundredths. I have nine Hundredths. There are two zeros here, so that should tell me I need two numbers behind my decimal. Well, if I look up here, there's only one digit, which means I have to add a zero in the front of it in order to get my two places behind the decimal. This, when we read it, it's six tenths. Tenths, one place behind the decimal. I have a six up here. So this would be my six-tenths. Add the zero in the front to show I have no whole numbers. Here's our last one. We have hundredths, 75 hundredths, or 75 out of 100. Hundredths have two points behind the decimal. Here are my two numbers, and I put the zero in the front. Now, what happens if I'm given the decimal and I have to change it into a fraction. It's not as hard as you might think. So let's take a look at this decimal right here. We have two digits behind the decimal, so that tells me it is hundredths. So this is 21 hundredths. Well, that's 21 out of 100. So to write it as a fraction, I have 21 over 100. And remember, the zeros here, we're going to match how many digits are behind my decimal. Two digits here, two zeros here. In this case, I have 0.7, or 7 tenths. There's only one digit behind the decimal, 
So down here, I'm only going to have one zero. That seven comes up on top. Seven tenths matches the decimal seven tenths. Now, in this one, while I only have one actual digit plus the zero, I see there are two actual places behind the decimal. So I know that the bottom of my fraction is going to have to have two zeros in it. What do I put on top? Well, I have a zero and a four. I'm not going to put the zero that's in the front because it's not really needed. So I'm just going to put the four. So I have four hundredths. I have a decimal eight here. So this is eight tenths. One place behind the decimal. One zero to my denominator. Take my eight, put it on top. Eight tenths to match the decimal. So here I have four fractions and four decimals for you to try. Take each of the fractions and turn them into decimals. And then take each of the decimals and turn them into fractions. Remember, practice saying the word form of each of these. We'll go over the fractions in word form and the decimals in word form plus what they will change to after you pause the video here and give these a try for yourself. All right, so let's see how you did with these. In our first one, we have two tenths. I see tenths down there, so I have one place behind my decimal, and I put my zero in front. So this is two tenths in decimal form. In this one, I see two zeros, so I should have two places behind my decimal. I have two numbers up here. There's my 54. Put that zero in the front, so this is 54 hundredths. Four tenths is next, and when I write it as a decimal, it should look like this. Zero decimal four. Nine hundredths is our last fraction. Hmm, nine hundredths. Well, I see hundredths down here. Hundreds, two zeros. That means I need two places behind my zero. Since I only have a single digit on top, I've got to put that extra zero in the front. So this is what nine hundredths would look like as a decimal. Now we're on to changing our decimals to fractions. So for this one, we have 54 hundredths. I see two decimal places there, so that's hundredths. I'm going to take my 54 because I know that's going to go on top. Now, I have two numbers here, so that should tell me there are two zeros. This is 54 hundredths as the decimal, and this is 54 hundredths as a fraction. As we move on, I see one decimal place. That tells me there are tenths down there, one zero to match. Take my zero, put my six on top, so I have six tenths. Twelve hundredths, two decimal places means two zeros with my 12 on top, 12 hundredths. And for my last one, ooh, I see a zero in front of my number. Got to be careful. I have two decimal places, so I need two zeros in my denominator. I'm not going to put that zero in the front, so all I need is the four. So I end up with four hundredths. I hope this video is helpful in learning some basics of decimals and how they relate to fractions.